Okay, we got a few more people logging in. Great. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, hello, uh, my name is John Servos. I'm the Director of Commercialization Education with Fast Forward Medical Innovation, uh, also known as FFMI for those on the call who are outside of the University of Michigan. Uh, and I wanna welcome you to today's webinar. Um, before I introduce our two speakers uh, for this afternoon, I do have a few things that I would like to cover, um, including some technical housekeeping items. Um, a reminder to please keep your microphone and your video muted throughout the webinar so we can cut down on any background noise uh, and any distractions. If you would like to ask a question today, please type it into the chat feature. And if you don't wanna type your whole question into the chat, you can also submit an X to indicate that you would like to unmute your microphone and ask the question yourself. I will be monitoring the chat function as well as several other FFMI team members, um, and we will address questions probably in between the two speakers as well as uh, at the end as part of an open Q&A. Um, a reminder that the presentation is being recorded and we will share the recording and a PDF version of some of the slides with you. So today's webinar uh, is titled Key Considerations for the Preclinical Development of Therapeutic Innovations. Um, and its intent is to provide a high level look at the critical milestones and timelines for translating a therapeutic innovation to a clinical reality. It is provided by Fast Forward Medical Innovation, as I mentioned, and we are a unit of the Medical School Office of Research here at the University of Michigan. Um, our goal uh, here is to help biomedical researchers accelerate innovations from idea to impact. Sarah, if you want to advance the slide. So broadly we have, and there's a picture of our group there in our tagline, and on the next slide you'll see that we have four functions of fast forward medical innovation. Uh, we do provide a, a wide range of educational and training programs uh, that touch on a um, again, a wide range of commercialization con concepts in the life science space. Um, we have um, multiple levels of funding opportunities that come with mentorship. Um, we have a business development team that connects investigators with company partners. And then um, we do offer these services as part of a larger state and nationwide network as a hub at the university. Today's webinar is the second of seven that we are offering as part of a series. Uh, broadly, the goal of the entire series is to outline and describe critical concepts related to commercialization, uh, analyze unique paths to market, and appraise diverse models of academic and industry collaboration. You can go on to see a full lineup of all of the uh, uh, webinars on our website. Um, I'll note that the next webinar is July 8th, and that will focus on developing digital health technologies. The final thing that I'll mention uh, relates to the FFMI Innovation Studio, which is new. Uh, this is very similar to office hours for innovators who are working on a project. Uh, the goal here is to enhance the office hour experience by having you register in advance with a description of your innovation uh, and some preliminary questions. And then that will allow us to invite the appropriate experts to join the studio uh, with you and give you the best advice. More information on that program and registration can also be found on our website. Okay. With that, I'll introduce our two speakers. Um, today, first, we're going to hear from Dr. Sarah Risch. Uh, she is a biomedical innovation specialist with Fast Forward Medical Innovation, where she manages the Kickstart Awards as part of the Michigan Translational Research and Commercialization, also known as MTRAC, for Life Sciences Innovation Hub, uh, which is a statewide program that accelerates the transfer of technologies from higher education to the private sector for commercialization. Uh, she also received, or she did receive her PhD in biomedical science from the Ohio State University. After Sarah, we will be joined by Dr. Mukesh Nyadi. Uh, he is an associate professor in the Department of Radiation Oncology at the University of Michigan. He has over 20 years of experience in basic and translational oncology, where his work is focused on EGFR signaling. He completed his PhD at the University of Rajasthan in India, Indi India rather, sorry, uh, and he did a postdoc at the University of Michigan. So thank you both for joining us this afternoon. And Sarah, uh, please take it away. Thanks, John. Yeah, welcome everyone. Um, thank you for joining us today. We're gonna be talking about therapeutic development. Um, so for those of you who are or not familiar with this, it is a, generally you're gonna wanna start off with a milestone-based plan, um, really to 
utilize your valuable time and resources effectively, it's going to be important to set this up so that you'll fail fast. Uh, the most efficient way to accomplish this process is through team-based research. Um, assembling a team that has interdisciplinary expertise will be the best way to move forward with this. Uh, the best way to communicate this information across your team will also be to develop milestones with quantitative criteria. Now, most of you are very used to considering research risks when developing your projects. Uh, in this case, you're also going to want to consider clinical and commercial risks. So those will include understanding the clinical utility, uh, the potential for IP protection, and the process for regulatory approval. So the process for moving forward with a therapeutic development plan generally will begin with a commercial assessment, followed by target um, discovery and validation, uh, screening and lead identification, developing a target product profile, in vitro testing and lead optimization, in vivo testing um, and some safety, and then that'll eventually lead to your IND application and potential clinical trials. So this process, you can generally expect to take a minimum of six years to complete. And as much as here it's laid out nice and linear, uh, our speaker can certainly attest to the fact that this might look a bit more like what you can expect um, for your development process. So to get started, you'll need to really have an understanding of what the unmet need is for your product. Um, we're thinking about the clinical unmet needs, so really understanding the clinical context is where you're going to start there. Think about the epidemiology, um, the consequences of the disease, and understand the current standard of care. You'll also want some information on the commercial opportunity, and in this case we're talking about the market dynamics. So um, how many potential patients um, what is the size of the market and what does the future growth look like for the market? So for example, if you're addressing um, solutions for the elderly, given that we have an aging population, that market is anticipated to grow over the coming years. Um, so another thing you want to look at is the competitive landscape. And here you're going to not just look at the current standard of care, but also future standard of care, so solutions that are currently in development. Another important aspect to look at are past failed solutions, so really understanding why and how those failed so that you can sort of work around those areas and determine that you're moving down the best path. So these areas are definitely great opportunities for customer discovery. And here I'd like to highlight our upcoming fast pace course. Um, it is a short course on customer discovery. It's four, week long, four weeks long on five consecutive Fridays, kicking off on September 25th this year. This course works on customer discovery as well as some commercialization topics specifically to biomedical uh, commercialization. The therapeutic section is broken out individually, and so we do go through really some specifics related to therapeutic development. So if you have more information, certainly feel free to reach out to John Servas or any other member of our team. One of the commercial aspects that will be covered in the FAST-based course, um, and that is important for therapeutic development, is the potential for intellectual property protection. For the development of therapeutics, Patent protection is absolutely required for commercialization. This can be in the form of a novel composition of matter patent or a method of use patent. In general, you're gonna have more value if you have the novel composition of matter as well as a method of use patent. Um, in thinking about when to disclose your technology to your tech transfer office and when to file really a good, I think, rule of thumb is to talk to your tech transfer office early and often um, and keep up with that communication and make sure they know where you are and so you're filing uh, appropriately. There's somewhat of a balance of when to file because you'll have 20 years of patent protection and you need to weigh that against what the development timeline will look like for your therapeutic. 
Another important aspect that is also covered in more detail in our fast pace course is a, a, a target product profile. So a target product profile is a tool you'll use to concisely capture the key attributes of your project. This can be used for guiding your decision making with your team based research and will include minimum and optimum criteria for drug discovery projects. Um, and can therefore guide your critical go and no go decisions throughout the project. You'll also use your TPP as a basis for your dialogue with the FDA. And it's important to note that as opposed to some of your other stakeholders, the FDA is really only concerned with quality, safety, efficacy, and the risk to benefit ratio. We talk about setting up your TPP at the beginning because it's important to begin with the end in mind. Um, as your project moves forward, uh, you'll certainly gather more data and therefore modify your TPP. So this is really a living document that you can use throughout the process. And here we're including a link to a video that we have walking through some more aspects of the target product profile, as well as areas where you can do customer discovery around it. So back to our sort of process for advancing drug discovery pro uh, projects. As we said, once you're in the lab, it's gonna begin with discovery and target validation. So a target identification generally comes in two forms. We're talking about either target deconvolution or phenotypic screening, and that's in a case where you have a target, have a compound and need to identify a target. Um, and then in the other case, we're looking at target discovery, also known as target-based screening. And in this case, we have a target and want to identify a compound. So once we've gone through that, you'll also need to validate your target. And in order to do that, we're gonna be looking at reproducibility, as well as the ability to alter the ligand to target interactions, which should thereby modulate the activity. Um, once you've identified a target and validate it, you'll also want to think more about this target class and the potential to find drug-like compounds. So here, um, you'll want to think about what the marketability of your target is, thinking about sort of past solutions that have gone for, um, targeted this target. Um, and here is another area that would be really great for customer discovery. You'll also want to think about the availability of cell and organ model um, and animal models uh, for this target. And you need to make sure that these are definitely clinically relevant for the indication that you're thinking about addressing. Next, we'll talk about screening and lead identification. So when developing a screening strategy, you need to make sure that the hits will translate to in vivo pharmacology. A general process will be your high throughput screen, uh, followed by confirming identity and purity, and then confirming in a cell-based assay. At this point, you'll triage your hits, um, thinking about the drug ability, ease of synthesis, potency, history, physical properties, and potential for IP protection. Again, some of these will be good areas for customer discovery. And then at the end of the day, you should have moved from your hits to your potential lead molecule or your academic lead. And in order to do this, you're gonna be thinking about or working on the structure activity relationship, some cell-based assays for comp confirmation, thinking about potential PKPD and toxicity of that chemical class. Uh, at this point is when you will certainly want to have filed an invention disclosure. Um, and you'll be working closely with your tech transfer office to ensure that you are protected prior to any publications or pre, um, public presentations. Next, you'll move on to in vitro testing. And so here you'll be first of all looking for in vitro efficacy. This is also a stage at which you'll do lead optimization. So using structure-based drug design, you'll modify the molecule so that you can improve its infinity, uh, affinity, selectivity, physiochemical properties such as solubility and lipophilicity, um, pharmacological properties, and toxicity. And in general, this is probably about the earliest stage where pharma might consider licensing a technology. So most of these things will have done, been done in-house as opposed to outside of the university. Again, this is a great place for customer discovery with potential licensees to see what stage of development they're really interested in. 
Next, we'll talk about in vivo testing and ADME slash safety. Um, in this case, we're thinking about um, in vivo testing in the form of both efficacy. So choose an appropriate animal model. That's really something to stress here. Um, and then also thinking about the potential delivery methods and endpoints. So for example, if you're testing a compound to reduce heart problems and heart disease, uh, you'll probably want to be looking at lipid counts as opposed to death as your endpoint, um, since that would be, translate more closely to what you'd be looking for in your clinical trials. Again, this is a great place for customer discovery. A helpful hint when it comes to this in vivo testing, um, consider saving some samples and storing those for later studies, especially when it comes to uh, aspects like PK, PT down the road. Um, there are other in vivo aspects that you'll think about in this in vivo uh, testing section. So that's like your PKPD, your ADME, and your dosing. Uh, you'll next move on to your candidate selection. And for that candidate, you're going to want to make sure that you have an acceptable safety margin identified. You're going to need information on the delivery and formulation, G the GLP toxicology, and the feasibility of GMP manufacturing. And generally at this stage is where you'll most likely form, if you're going to form a company, um, as opposed to simply out licensing to an already formed company, this is generally that stage. Um, but again, you'll want to do some customer discovery, probably especially with investors, if you're thinking that a startup is the route that you want to go. And so after all of this work, you're going to file an IND application with the FDA. Uh, this is going to be based on your non-clinical data, specifically the efficacy, safety, and pharmaceutical quality, or CMC. Um, you're going to need to include animal pharmacology and toxicology studies, chemistry and manufacturing information, as well as clinical protocols and investigator information. At the end of the day, your hope is to get um, approval to then move forward to your clinical trials. But in general, this is just a really high level overview of what you would be doing preclinically um, to move your project forward. So I'd like to finish out here with some resources for you. Um, like John said, these slides will be shared and you'll be able to access these links. But uh, our office, a general good way to move forward with our office is to schedule an idea consultation where we'll meet with you and discuss your specific project, um, your current stage of development, and what resources are best for you at this time. Uh, if you're here at U of M, you also can potentially access Michigan Drug Discovery, who does have some pilot grants that I believe are offered twice a year. Uh, Mish R is also here at U of M and offers regulatory support for the pre-IND process. And then uh, a lot of really great resources, especially related to the customer discovery um, and sort of clinical sizing questions that we were asking at the beginning, um, that can come from our great library resources. And that is all that I have for right now. Um, next, we're gonna pass it on to Mukesh, who will talk about his experience with this process. But at this point, I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you, Sarah, for that intro. Please, if you do have any questions, uh, feel free to submit via the chat feature um, or place an X to indicate that you'd like to unmute and ask yourself while Sarah, you, if you wanna go ahead and stop sharing your screen, we'll allow Yukesh to share his slides and then we'll transition.